Okay, good morning. Good morning. All right, it is uh, Friday. I'm going to read two chapters today in the K. We're going to do chapter five and chapter six because they're both very, um, they're both very short. A bit of bad luck for me. Um, I don't have any more clean shirts, so I, I had to wear the same one. Um, running out of food, uh, not feeling so good right now. I've been on the, this raft a long time. Um, and I hope things will change soon. Don't worry. Don't call the Coast Guard or anything like that. I think I'll be fine. Um, we just need to, I just need to read this and we'll just keep going. Okay. All right. We'll keep going with this. Things are uh, looking bleak for poor Philip. He is now uh, blind. We don't know how long that's going to last. Timothy says, oh, just a couple of days. Um, and it's, it's, I mean, you got to understand, how are they getting, they have the fresh water in the keg, but that's going to end, it's going to run out at some point, and they have the flying fish, which is good, a couple of biscuits, they're, at least they're out of the elements, but boy, oh boy, this is a scary, scary, scary situation that they're in. All right, let's see what happens, let's see what happens in these next two chapters. Chapter five. I guess it was toward noon on the third day aboard the raft that Timothy said tensely, I hear a moda. A moda? Shh. I listened. Yes, there was a far off engine sound coming in faintly above the slap of the sea. Then I could hear Timothy moving around. Tis an aircraft, he said. My heart began to pound. They were looking for us. I felt around, then crawled from beneath the shelter to look toward the sound, but I could see nothing. I heard the hinges of, on the trap door creak. Timothy said quietly, as though afraid to chase the sound away. It knowing that we are down here by seeing smoke, I do believe. He ripped down one of the triangle legs, and I heard cloth tearing. Soon he said, we made the torch, young boss. The man up there be seeing the smoke, all right, all right. The faint drone of the aircraft seemed closer now. In a moment, I smelled cloth burning and knew he was holding the wrapped piece of wood toward the sky. He shouted, look down here. But already the drone seemed to be fading. It's not like a drone that we're used to. He just means the drone of the engine noise. Timothy yelled, I see it. I see it. Way to port. I tried to make my eyes cut through the darkness. Is he coming our way? Don't know. Don't know, young boss, Timothy replied anxiously. I said, I can't hear it now. There was nothing in the air but the sea sounds. Timothy shouted, look down here. There is a raft with a little blind boy, an old man and stew cat. Look down here, I tell you. The drone could not be heard, just the slap of the water and the sound of the light wind making our shelter flap. We were alone again on the ocean. After a moment of silence, I heard the sizzle of water as Timothy doused the torch. He sighed deeply. I be ready next time to, for true. Let the torch dry, then I be ready. Soon he sat down beside me. Tis a good thing not to harass the soul over this, meaning don't harass your self. Just don't be disheartened. Just live with that situation. We'll be okay. We are edging into the aircraft track, same as the ship they run. I said nothing, but put my head down on my knees. Do not be disheartened, young boss. Today we will be found to be true. But the long, hot day was passing without sight of anything. I knew Timothy was constantly scanning the sea. It was all so calm now that the raft didn't even seem to be drifting. Once I crawled over to the edge to touch the warm water and felt Timothy right behind me. He said, careful young boss, the shark's always hungry, always waiting for the man to fall overboard. Drawing back from the edge, I asked, are there many here? Yes, many ear, but long we have our wrath. They do not malice us. Malice, he, he's saying they do not malice, and malice is, is bad intentions and actions. 
Standing on the seawall at Willemstad, sometimes I'd seen their fins in the water. I'd also seen them on the dock at the Ruddercade Market, their mouths open and those sharp teeth grinning. I went back under the shelter, spending a long time rubbing Stewcat. He purred and pushed himself along my body. I was glad that I had seen him and had seen Timothy before going blind. I thought how awful it would have been to awaken on the raft and not know what they looked like. Timothy must have been standing over us, for he said, "De cat not good luck, meaning the cat is not good luck. After a moment, he added, but to cause the death of the cot is very bad luck. I don't think Stu Cat is bad luck, I said. I'm glad he is here with us. Timothy did not answer. He turned back, I guess to watch the sea again. I could imagine those bloodshot eyes set in that massive, scarred black face sweeping over the sea. Tell me what's out there, Timothy, I said. It was very important to know that now. I wanted to know everything that was out there. He laughed. Just miles of blue water, miles of blue water. Nothing else? He realized what I meant. Oh, to be sure, young boss. I see a fish jump way forward. That mean large fish chase him. Then a while back, a turtle passed us port side, but too far out to reach him. His eyes were becoming mine. What's in the sky, Timothy? In the sky? He searched it. No clouds, young boss, just blue like twas yesterday. But now and then I see a petrel. While ago, booby. I laughed for the first time all day. It was a funny name for a bird. A booby? Timothy was quite serious. This booby I saw was a blue face maybe nesting out in Serenia Bank. Maybe not. They be feeding on the flying fish. Ah, true watching the birds, cause they tell us we very close to the shore. How does a booby look, Timothy? Nothing much, he replied. Tail like chocolate, sharp beak, most white on its body. I tried to picture it, wondering if I'd ever see a bird again. Okay, that was chapter five. Now we're going to run into chapter six. Luckily, I still have a very important thing for me is my uh, throat lozenges. A little wet, a little moist, but that's okay. Chapter six. In the early morning, I knew it was early because the air was still cool and there was dampness on the boards of the raft. I heard Timothy shout, I see an island true. In wild excitement, I stumbled up and fell overboard. I went under the water yelling for him, then came up gasping. I heard a splash and knew he was in the water too. Something slapped against my leg and I thought it was Timothy. I knew how to swim, but didn't know which way to go. He's blind and in the water. That's pretty scary. So I was treading water. Then I heard Timothy's frightened roar, sharks! And he was thrashing about near me. He grabbed my hair with one hand and used his other arm to drag me back toward the raft. I had turned on my face and was trying to hold my breath. Then I felt my body being thrown and I was back on the boards of the raft, gasping for air. I knew that Timothy was still in the water because I could hear splashing and cursing. The raft tilted down suddenly to one side. Timothy was back on board, panting. He bent over me, he yelled, damn fool man, I told you about the shark. I knew Timothy was in a rage. I could hear his heavy breathing and knew he was staring at me. Shark all around us, all the time, he roared. I said, I'm sorry, Timothy said. On this raft, you crawl, young boss. You hear me? I nodded. His voice was thick with anger, but in a moment, after he took several deep breaths, he asked, You are right, young boss. I guess he sat down beside me to rest. His breathing was still heavy. Finally, he said, man, die quick out there. We'd both forgotten about the island. I said, Timothy, you saw an island? He laughed. Yes, the island, there tis. I said, where? Timothy answered scornfully, there, look, man, look. Angrily, I said to him, I can't see. He kept forgetting that. His voice was low when he said, yes, young boss, that be true. 
in all this harassment with the shark, I did forget. Then I felt his hands on my shoulders. He twisted them. That direction, young boss. Straining to look where he had me pointed, I asked, Are there any people on it? Tis a very small island, outrageous low. I repeated, Are there any people on it? I thought they could contact my father and then send for help. Timothy answered honestly, No, young boss, no people. People not be living on the island that is no water. No people, no water, no food, no phones. It was not any better than the raft. In fact, it might be worse. How far are we? How far away are we? About two mile, Timothy said. Maybe we should stay on the raft. A schooner will, a schooner is a ship, by the way, for you. A schooner will see us or an airplane, Timothy said positively. No, we better off on land and we drift in that way. The tide be running with us. His voice was happy. He wanted to be off the sea. I don't blame him. I want to be off the sea too. I'm getting a little, a little dry. I don't get seasick usually, but this is, this is different. I was certain my father had planes and ships out looking for us. I said, Timothy, the Navy is searching for us. I know. Timothy did not answer me. He just said, "'Tis a pretty thing to be sure. I see a white beach and behind that low sea great bushes. Then on the hill some palm, maybe 20, 30 palm." I was sure he couldn't even see that far. I said, "'Timothy, wouldn't it be better if we stayed on the raft and found a big island with people on it?' He ignored me. He said, "'Biden tonight, I saw surf washing white over the banks off the port, but did not want to awaken you, young boss, but knew we'd be getting near the K's. Near the K's. Ah, I said, that's the name, the K, and they're getting near the K's. There's many of them. I said, I don't want to go on that island. I don't think there was anyone on earth as stubborn as old Timothy. There was steel in his voice when he answered, we'd be going on that island, young boss, that be true. But he knew how I felt now because he added, from this island, we will get help. Be true, I swear. That was chapter six. Okay, so you're going to have a great weekend. I'm going to find it. Oh, I do. Hey, I do see some land out there. In, no, that way. I'm sorry. I think it's that way. I, I do see some land. So I think I'm in a good situation now. I am going to start heading toward that land that's that way um, and see what I can find. But it does look better. So it's the first land I've seen in a couple of days. So um, you're doing a great job, I think. I hope you're doing a great job by listening, reading, uh, reading with us. And have a great weekend. We will see you um, on Monday, okay, guys? On Monday, I'll have uh, I'll have I'll clean my shirts. Don't worry. Okay, we'll see you then. Bye. -bye.